Hey everyone, like I explained in my previous video, I went to Amsterdam to protest. Um, for me personally, it's mostly about the healthcare. I want them to invest in the, in the healthcare and not reduce it with 4.5 billion euro per year. And I'm also protesting against the Green Pass. I don't believe anyone should be excluded from society because of their medical choices. Everybody goes for their own reasons towards a protest. Some do it for um, the business, some do it for the freedom of choice, some do it for the education of the kids. Uh, but anyway, it is because we want our government to do something different. Now, I'm uh, a peaceful protester. I don't want to use violence. I don't want to be in a situation that I need to feel like I need to use violence or protect myself. I just want to be heard. I want to be heard by the House of Representatives. I want them to hear me um, and represent me. That's what I believe democracies should be. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't want to use violence. But that's easy for me to say. Because my life, up to a point, is fine. Um, I have my income, my family's fine, we're all healthy. Um, we are restricted in our own way, but I can live with that up to a point. If you look at other people, um, some people's children have committed suicide. I cannot imagine how it has to be if your child commits suicide because of the policy your government is running. Like, there are children that don't see a future prospect or can't live with the pressure that's being put on them right now. There are also people whose businesses have gone bankrupt or they need to sell their house. Um, and let's not, if you own a business, usually your house uh, or whatever you've acquired, accumulated over the time, that's your pension. If you need to sell your pension, like some of these people are going to have to work until they die because of situations like that. So for the people that are in a situation like it's, I, I feel like we need to put more effort into imagining how others feel. Like if your life is fine, okay, but um, if a policy is being run in a way that somebody else's life isn't fine, um, it's we could use a little bit more solidarity towards each other um, and in helping each other. So I feel like we could put more effort into that, at least in my country. So that's the reason I'm demonstrating. I want to be there. I want to show the government I'm not okay with what you're doing. And I want you to put my tax money in the healthcare system. That's, that's why I went there. Um, so some people were... Um, not, not, not necessarily arrested, but they were being pulled off the road and um, saying that if you go to Amsterdam, you've been warned now and we will arrest you if you go to Amsterdam. You don't need to bus anymore, you can also the bus out, but if you go to Amsterdam, then you will be all aangehouden. So that's kind of thing. Now, once I arrived in Amsterdam, um, the first thing uh, when we were near the museum plane, that's, that's where it was. Uh, we were being searched, uh, the cops, um, they were searching people, like if you entered they were frisking you for weapons or if you had anything in your bags. And this actually went pretty fine, it's just like when you were going to a festival or something, it was, it was really light in mood. We made some jokes with the cops and then we moved on and we were allowed to move on to the, uh, the meeting spot. Now everything was fine, we were just having um, some fun over there, just meeting people, talking to, uh, to everyone, and uh, there's actually police uh, walking among the crowd, nothing um, really bothersome or anything. Um, they were putting up some shows or just some walks, and eventually um, there's, there were drones in our surrounding, that kind of made me feel a little bit grim. And um, there was a, a police announcement on the speakers, which I couldn't make any sense of. It was just, this is the police speaking, blah, 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 blah. I, couldn't, I couldn't really hear what they were saying. Uh, meanwhile, the crowd was moving further and they were going towards the second demonstration. So, so the crowd moved towards Wester Park, which is to the north. That's where the, uh, the other part of the demonstration was. So uh, this was announced. Um, they knew we would go there. When we were moving there, um, 
I think when they were saying this is the police, blah blah blah, they were saying um, there's an emergency order being restricted. You all need to leave. And we, the people already, in in my perspective, they were already moving uh, towards the next destination. Um, but as you can see in the in this footage, this is what I recorded. Uh, you can see the mobile unit. I really don't want to call these guys police because by the end of this video, it don't make sense. But these guys aren't worthy of uh, the name police. But uh, as you can see, they are <laughs> they are moving. Um, they were be before they were coming. They said the uh, police is ca going to perform. No. Not not like in a in a band way, but as in perform, like telling you to go away. To the museum plan. Uh, people were already moving, so I don't really know why they chose to do that, but okay. Uh, we started moving and um, just looking around a bit. It took really long, and like for uh, in 15, min 15 minutes, we walked like 10 or 20 meters. We, we couldn't move forward. And eventually, I noticed that they were blocking off our path. The people couldn't move forward it seemed um, at first i thought like okay maybe they just made the road more narrow so it would be a smaller group um that could move forward i was like okay, maybe it's a safety thing trying to make the groups a little bit less big um but i couldn't really see what was going on over there now eventually i looked towards the south and um, i noticed that the mobile unit blocked that was moving towards us blocked off the path towards the south. Now, you don't want to be near these guys because when they uh, come towards you, they will hit you. They will hit you in the head, no questions asked. They, they don't care. You can't talk with these people. Once you're close, they hit you. That's it. Um, so I'm not moving towards them. <laughs> Screw that. I'm, I'm a pussy. <laughs> so um, they're at the south. But at the same time, I look towards the north, which we were supposed to walk to, and now on the footage, it's entirely blocked off. So we can't go south, we can't go north, we can't go towards the sides. We are now locked. We are locked in. Like, what what do you want to do in this situation? Are they going to arrest us all? Then that's, that's kind of hard to do. We're not being given any instructions. Um, like, you need to go here or there. They're not talking. At least it's kind of hard to... Um, like I can't really say that they aren't giving us instructions, but I didn't hear anything. There's nobody with a speaker saying, hey, you all need to go south or you all need to go over here. There's no communication. So I'm just waiting here. I'm like, okay, I'm not going. I can't go back because those guys will hit me and I can't move forward because the crowd is too big and it seems like the, the path is blocked. So I'll just wait and try to have some fun with everybody. Now, eventually, um, there's a lot of yelling and stuff and we see the 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 mobile unit from the north go away i'm like okay that seems like they're they chose they've chosen to stop blocking the path and we were just having fun uh, we were moving north we kind of made some noise um I, what i usually do is just uh, whistle <laughs> real loud and yeah we went on with the demonstration we moved towards the next next destination and uh, just having some fun, meeting new people. Uh, we had some grandma on the balcony. And yeah, we we went to Wester Park and we get to see Christian Terrace. Um, kind of my idol in the situation. Uh, give a speech. And then we went home. That was uh, it for me. And I was like, okay, well, nothing really happened. Um, from my perspective, I did meanwhile get some footage um, about the police, what happened to the north. And it didn't make a lot of sense to me, like, because nothing really happened to me. It was like, okay, well, I'm seeing a lot of footage, um, but I don't understand why or how or how is this possible. And I really needed uh, a day to reflect and think back on what was going on. And after watching some more footage, I realized um, we were blocked off and the people that were being to the north side were really getting a beating. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Why, why did this happen the way that it did? And I remember thinking at work, 
I'll wait for the media to make sense of this. <laughs> Why did I think that? Because what is the media gonna say? What are they going to announce from what happened? And that's when it started to make sense to me. But let, look at the picture. Look at how it how it's being portrayed. Now, now look at the moment that it happens. Here you see the police or the mobile unit just standing there. Now here you see the, the, the black police. Look at them. They're moving forward towards the people. Look at what's happening. They move past the mobile unit. And there we go. Now these people, these veterans, and the, the, they are confirmed veterans. Like, I can't confirm them all, but some are confirmed. Um, but they're going towards them. Let's have a look again. There they go, moving past the mobile unit towards the demonstrators. Okay, so here. Does this stance look familiar? Look at the situation. It's just from a different angle. They provoked it. And now this picture is in the mainstream media, but it's not um, demonstrators going wild. It's the military police, or in this situation, the Rotterdam uh, arrest unit, they're going wild. It's, it's, yeah. This is our mainstream media. This is, this is a lie. They're lying to us. They're making it look like the demonstrators are doing it, but they did. And guess what happens after this? <laughs> and guess who gets arrested? Here you see him. The veteran that were forming a line, like they were literally functioning as a human shield. He is the one that gets arrested on charges that he's assaulting the police. Those were the charges. It is crazy. So, <laughs> the, I'm, I'm gonna make a small sidestep. Uh, because the Rotterdam unit is from Rotterdam, obviously. Uh, but the same unit was um, in Rotterdam also randomly hitting people. Like, these were just on a bench having their drink. And these people were also getting hit. Um, now this is really out of context. And in Rotterdam, things really did get out of hand. Um, like if, if I would have been there, I would have just gone home because... Like I said, I'm more for the peaceful things, but I can't judge for others because my life is fine in that sense. Um, but I just found it noticeable that um, a group of police that isn't um, the mobile unit, because those have um, uh, yellow jackets, a shield and stuff. And it's the same group that was taunting people in Amsterdam, or taunting people, that was attacking the veterans. So, I don't know what to make of it from the footage in Rotterdam, but if I just look at that it's the same people in Amsterdam causing troubles, I'm kind of losing my faith in these people. So I want to show you uh, another fragment that's in the news about uh, our veterans, just to give you a bit of a view of how the media handles these situations and how it feels like the absolute opposite of what's going on. De groep die je hier ziet is de vrijwilligersorganisatie In het Gelid voor Vrijheid. Een groep veteranen met een missie. Bijna een jaar geleden voelden we ons geroepen om, uh, om op te staan voor de veiligheid van burgers die gebruik wilden maken van hun, in ons ogen, grondrecht om te demonstreren. Raf diende zelf in Srebrenica. Bij demonstraties kiest zijn groep geen kant, benadrukt hij, maar zijn ze er voor allebei de partijen. En dan is het... Uh, Eigenlijk een beetje brandjes blussen wat je probeert. Dus als je ziet dat er iets, iets aan de hand is, probeer je daar op een rustige, vreedzame manier in ieder geval daar de angel uit, de, uit te halen. Maar dat is een taak die juist ligt bij de politie, zegt Tweede Kamerlid Dirk Boswijk. En wat ze hiermee doen is dat ze de wet eh, niet alleen overtreden op het feit van het bedragen van uniformen, maar ook het vorm van milities. Dat is gewoon keihard strafbaar. Dus ik vind dat de minister hier keihard moet gaan handhaven, want dit is gewoon kwestie van normen en waarden en ook het beschermen van ons instituut, van onze uh, krijgsmacht en van het vele actieve dienende militairen. In het gelid voor vrijheid zegt graag te willen praten met mensen die het oneens zijn met hun acties. 
Stoppen, dat zijn ze niet van plan. So this thing is not the responsibility of the veterans to keep the peace, but it's the responsibility of the police to keep the peace. Als je ziet dat er iets, iets aan de hand is, probeer je daar op een rustige, vreedzame manier in ieder geval daar de angel uit, de, uit te halen. Maar dat is een taak die juist ligt bij de politie, zegt Tweede Kamerlid Dirk Boswijk. So, so you tell me, is this keeping the peace or is pushing everyone into a trap, blocking off both sides, punching everybody who's passing by and even putting attack dogs on them and trying to escalate a peaceful situation, keeping the peace. This is upside down. So if, if it's the job of the police to keep the peace and to de-escalate situations, then this is something that I would expect. They remove the blockade, they just let the protesters through. Look, he's giving a signal, it looks peaceful to me. And they're moving aside. Now, these guys still have the batons, but they're not aggressively holding them in the air. So, if you say you're keeping the peace, this looks a lot more peaceful. Now, this is out of context, I don't know the situation, but this is what I expect. So the next part is just my opinion and how I perceive the world in the last year, I would say. Um, my opinion changes with new information. I'm always open for new stuff. So if you want to have a conversation or a discussion, uh, you can have that with me. Uh, and even in the sense that we can disagree and from my perspective without getting mad at each other. So I'm always up for that. Um, what happened in my country is uh, the last year they've been really putting all the blame on the unvaccinated people and really stigmatizing them into saying they're anti-vaxxers, corona deniers, conspiracy theorists. I even saw things like gays come by, this, but it's just stupid. Uh, fascists, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, none of these things make any sense to me. We're not anti-vaxxers because we don't want an experimental vaccine. <laughs> like, we're not against vaccines, we're against this one. We don't feel like we need to have this one in order to get through the pandemic. And that's just true. Like, young people, they don't get sick at all. Why should they get vaccines? They, get, they call us corona deniers. I'm not denying uh, Corona, I'm just denying the severity of it. Yes, it's it's a bit more, um, it's, it's a bit harder than uh, the flu, but it will wear off over time. And when people get immunity and the, the virus itself wears off, then, then the pandemic is over. And I think we're already there. Um, conspiracy theorists, well, <laughs> it's kind of hard not to be at the moment. Um, but I'll leave that in the middle. Uh, I think they, they're saying all of this stuff, so you don't want to be part of a certain group. They've been doing this for a long while, and this messed me up. I'll, I'll explain why. They say it's the pandemic of the unvaccinated. Every unvaccinated person on the ICU costs 4 to 10 people surgery. Like, not, so only the unvaccinated, or does this also go for other people? Doesn't matter. Um, this is with people that had cancer and such. The hospital has no place for these people, but it do for the unvaccinated. Very unfair. Come on, they even locked out uh, parents from the kids. They're saying that if you're not vaccinated, you can't watch your kids swimming. And people go real dark when you say stuff like this. There were even people putting up screens in here so the unvaccinated people outside couldn't watch their kids swim. Like how, how dark can you get in your mind? How far are you? That feels to me like you're being brainwashed. Um, here, deliberately not vaccinated, then no medical help. You can take this really far. Does it also go for people <laughs> that smoke? Does it go for people with uh, that are that have a higher BMI, that have a higher weight? Uh, unvaccinated, no access. Don't buy from the unvaccinated. Not vaccinated over there. Vaccinated go over there. Like this is a trick. This is so that we. This, this creates two things. One, a hardened society with two sides. They, they created sides by doing this. They created two sides. What you're gonna create is one side is gonna say it's your fault for following the rules and the other side is gonna say it's your fault for not following the rules. You need to get vaccinated. Study the history, please. You don't, we've, got, we've gotten through pandemics without getting vaccinated. The only thing that's needed to happen, if you believe that this is the solution, is sit out the time until a vaccine comes, then the people who are vulnerable take the vaccine, 
you also got natural immunity, so whoever is unvaccinated gets immunity through getting the disease. The virus wears off, which is kind of happening with Omicron now. So right now, I believe we're out of the pandemic. It's over. If you believe that the vaccine works, if you believe that Corona is as bad as it is, if you look at the history like the, the Spanish flu, it took two years, a lot of people died because then you didn't have vaccines or, well, I don't think this is comparable with the Spanish flu. That's my personal opinion. Um, but after two years, the Spanish flu, which was just influenza, a, a subtype of influenza A, by the way. Um, but after two years, the hardest part was over and it was already uh, devolving into a, a weaker virus. And if you look at the, the Spanish flu, they had the same symptoms as uh, COVID, which was um, having difficulty to breathe and your lungs being attacked. So not really that crazy. I put this in here because with this, uh, by stigmatizing one group and saying they're conspiracy theorists, corona denies, anti-vaxxers, if you keep saying that about people, then you don't want to listen to them. And that's kind of what they've been trying to do here. Like, don't listen to them, they're conspiracy theorists. Um, and what happens is if you don't listen to them, but only to the media, what you get is propaganda, because that's, that's kind of what propaganda is. Um, Dissemination of information, facts, arguments, rumor, health truths, or lies to influence influence public opinion. It's, yeah, it's getting pretty close. It's all I call this medical segregation because if you're not because of your medical choice, you're getting segregated or uh, being put apart. This has been this isn't the first time in history that we've been doing this. Is with the uh, the segregation. Well, a major television station in Jackson, Mississippi worked hard to defend segregation and deny access to opposing voices, both local and national. In the second war, the same thing happened. Any article that went out had to be approved by the Germans. So, again, like, if you think about it, North Korea has the same situation. You don't get any other information than what they give you. I was looking up um, how to handle what you could do against COVID. Get vaccinated as soon as it's turn, keep distance, open a window, wear a mask, clean hands, all this stuff. Nothing says anything about medicine, nothing says anything about vitamins, nothing says anything about exercise or how to stay uh, healthy. I had the same thing when I had COVID, I had COVID about a month ago. The health institute called me and they said, all right, who were you close with? Who did you affect? Can you isolate yourself from your family? That's that pretty much was the, the the conversation. I asked them, do I have Omicron or do I have Delta? Because at that moment, Omicron was coming and they said they didn't test for that. And I asked them, like, it's, it should be important for my medical file if I had Omicron or Delta. Um, but they wouldn't. I asked them, like, I know you're, you're saying uh, on the news, I see this, you're saying you're testing separate stuff separately or, or later if how many you have Omicron, how many have Delta. When you do test it with mine, I want to know about it. So I want to know which one I had. Nope, they're not going to tell me. Then a friend called me and he, see, he said, take your vitamin C, take vitamin D, rest up. Um, also, he also advised me to take zinc. And I told him, are you a doctor? <laughs> the health institute didn't give me that advice. Why, why would I listen to you? You're not going to um, convince me that with all our science, with all our medicine, there isn't anything else than a vaccine that helps against COVID. We have so much medicine, we have so much options and nothing, absolutely nothing works but a vaccine. Uh, kind of red flag for me. So, because we've been stigmatizing these groups, don't listen to them, they're bad, uh, it's their fault, it's their fault we're still in a pandemic, it's their fault that we're never going to get out of a pandemic, it's their fault that there are going to be mutations. They have to keep that real. They have to keep that real. That's why they keep saying it's forbidden, don't be part of the group. Uh, the organization refuses to cooperate, the organization didn't refuse to cooperate. Uh, he went from five to, f to three hours. And they wanted to. So this isn't just this isn't refusing to cooperate. This is having a negotiation and not coming out of it because you disagree with it. That's that's a, a very big difference. And he also laid down a path of 8.3 kilometers and he turned it back to 6.6. .6. 
So don't say they refused it, but this is just the news. They want to say in advance, it's forbidden. These guys are protesters. These guys are going to riot. Uh, the bad people coming to this. So they have to make that real. They have to do something so they can put other things in the media. That's why they blocked off the path. That's why they just uh, broke a peaceful situation because you can't put anything in the news if a bunch of veterans are blocking off the people from the police and the police to towards the people. So if you can't create uh, a confrontation, you can't put anything in the news. So that's why they forced it. And that's what you see in the media now. Now what do you have? Violence begets violence. Now you are arrested a veteran, so people are going to be pissed off. So they're going to the complex. Um, they're demanding the release of the veteran. Um, and s some officer, according to the news, got abused at the cell complex. Yeah, again, people are going to be pissed off if you beat them up for no reason. Um, then uh, Gerjan from radio station spoke out. He saw the he saw the footage of the police doing what they did, putting them in a corner and starting. Yeah, it's just starting beating them. So he said the police should be ashamed of themselves. Duizenden vreedzame mensen die geen kant op konden. En daar kwam de politie en de ME. ME'ers die wild om zich heen aan de slaan waren op weerloze mensen. Politiehondenbegeleiders die maar wat graag de tanden van hun honden in de armen en benen plaatsen van onschuldige demonstranten. Wat afschuwelijk om te zien. Politie, schaam je kapot. Mijn respect voor de politie is tot een nulpunt gedaald. Met je gummiknuppel losgaan op gewone burgers. Of je hond laten bijten in de armen van onschuldige demonstranten. Dat verdient geen respect. Nu niet, nooit niet. Politie, schaam je kapot. And then he got suspended. Now, he did come out of it with the news station, so I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Um, but this has been happening a lot. Any doctor who says otherwise, they get fired. If a doctor describes prescribes medicine that possibly could work, he gets a fine. Um, if you speak out like Delta Cruz did or anybody else, they throw so much mud at you, it's crazy. Anyone who goes against it is bad. That's what they keep saying in the news. But you can say anything, you, you can say what you want about unvaccinated, but don't say anything uh, else than the narrative. Now here again, a judge said the um, that the facts are too serious to release the man. Four police officers were injured in the disturbances. By going to such a demonstration, you become part of a group. Even if you do not know those other people, you are jointly responsible for the behavior of that group. I hope you keep that in mind from now. So again, telling the people, don't be part of the group. Don't be part of these people. Don't go to these protests. The thing is, if a judge says you are uh, part of a group, you, you are jointly responsible for the behavior of that group. Kind of wish you would say that to the police. He stated that he lost his temper and spoke of a repelling kick. I can imagine losing my temper if you're standing in front of there. But this is kind of the thing because yeah, this, this is also, there's nothing in, well, they did show this, but there's nothing in here or in any of these articles about the police being abusive towards the people. There's nothing in the news about being people being locked up in on purpose and then getting the asses handed over to them. And keep in mind that uh, when we were entering over there, they searched our pockets and, and sites. Not, not everyone, you can't do that to everyone, but we're not coming over there armed. We're not coming over there with you know, violent intentions. If we had violent intentions, the police couldn't walk amongst the people because the police were just walking over there with the people. No one's getting attacked. The only place that something happened was here. That's the only place something happened, and then later uh, at the police station. But again, violence begets violence. You got to, don't do that, because if you remove this with actually de-escalating the situation, you wouldn't have this. You wouldn't have people being mad at the police. You wouldn't have, this wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened. This wouldn't have happened. This wouldn't have happened, and you would just have a peaceful day. Now there isn't any news about terrorists. I'll put it in a, in a video here why I like him. But if you if you look in the, up in the news uh, for my country, it's not in it. There's nothing about him in our um, in our mainstream media. And the question that I address not only to you in the parliament, but to every European citizen, to ask your own government: Were you properly informed about what is going on? Because we had. 
a lot of debate at the beginning of this year in the parliament where we demanded full access to the contract signed between these companies that produce the vaccines and the European Union. And I quote from an article in Euroactive who says the following, you know, it's an article from January 22, 2021, that says the following. The contract signed between pharmaceutical company and the European Commission in November of 2020 was made available to MAPS on Tuesday in a redacted format after the company agreed to open the contract up to scrutiny. Say what? Say what? So you're imposing a medical product on the European citizens without them knowing what's in these contracts? Not only them knowing, but us, we don't know. So after a lot of pressure in the parliament, as the article says, these contracts were disclosed to us and to the public. And I want to show you some of those pages. And you tell me if this is okay for the European citizens to be exposed to this situation where they cannot come to work, they cannot enter a store, they cannot go with their kids to schools, where they cannot freely move from one country to another, unless in one situation is vaccinated with one of these products. So these are the contracts that were disclosed by the Commission with the approval of the company. This is unheard of. And I will just show you the pages. These are the pages. Right. You see? They call this transparency these days. So this is the fundamental principle, right? Of democracy. I'm asking you guys, is this transparency? Do you see anything? Because we don't. European citizens' money have been given by Ursula von der Leyen to these companies. What happened with those money? Where are they? Why are they open with the people and fully transparent? So we all know what is going on. This is the thing. Um, this is why I like him. Because, like I said, where I, I can't check uh, our own outbreak management team, the CDC, that advises um, our government i can see what it we can't follow what they're saying we can't check it they work with hospital figures when uh, a political party asks for those figures they say no no emotion they they don't even want to look at it they just throw it away we don't know what they're doing we can't check our government it's not in control so this is van der leyen and she wants some mandatory covid jab that was what Christian Terrace was talking about, those contracts. They, they can't see what's in the contract. Her spouse is Heiko von der Leyen, who is, since December 2020, in gene therapy. Um, for those who don't know, a lot of people still compare it with uh, a vaccine, and they think about the vaccines that they get as a child and such. The vaccines you get as a child, the viruses that it's for, don't mutate in the same way. The vaccine is a different technology than the mRNA technology. The, the vaccines we now have with COVID are the first of their kind. That is not only an experimental vaccine, it's also an experimental technology. Both are new. And <laughs> that's why you can't compare it with the vaccines you get as a child. So it's, it's not about that. Now, um, some people say the new vaccine is gene therapy, some say it isn't. I don't know enough about it, but there are a lot of doctors who keep saying it's gene therapy. So I just found this a little bit convenient. Now, I want to end with something. And I want to end with this. History never repeats itself in the same way. But there are a lot of people saying, well, the law is the law. If you look at our history, like the Holocaust, <laughs> Holocaust was legal, killing Jews, no problem, hiding Jews was criminalized. Slavery is fine. Freeing them, again, criminalized. Segregation, no problem. Protesting for it, criminalized. Right now, this to me feels with all these vaccine mandates they're trying to put up everywhere. That's, that's, if it feels like for me, that feels like medical segregation. And if you're for it, that's fine. You're going to be part of it. 
If you're against it, well, guess what? You can protest against it. The law is not a moral compass. So if you're ever wondering how you would react if you were in one of these times, the answer is actually simple. We're doing it right now. <laughs>